Now let's talk about some of the electronic records commonly seen in colleges and universities. While the intent is not to provide an exhaustive listing of all electronic records, the idea is to cover some of the more common records as well as to get you thinking about other electronic records within your specific environment that may need your attention. Obviously, we must be concerned about those records you are mandated to retain for long-term periods or permanently. But what does long-term mean to you since this is a very subjective time frame? Is it 30 years, 40, 50, or even 100 years? For some in the IT world, Long-term means as little as three to five years, considering the rate of change in technology. Typically, you should be concerned with those electronic records needing to be retained in their native format for over five to ten years or more. It is important for you to use as a guideline the retention schedule adopted by your institution. In addition to those records mandated by some governing body to be retained, you must be concerned with any records involved in litigation or even potential litigation. Considering that some cases can drag on for many years or even decades, it is important that you have close contact with your institution's legal counsel about current or potential litigation that may involve electronic records held by you or other departments. There is also a potential opportunity for your area to leverage resources from other departments such as legal or risk management that may need help preserving electronic records. Typically, the legal department does not have the internal expertise and often looks outside to third parties to pay for such services. Why not consider your area for support? Another obvious area are those items deemed to have historical value to your institution, plus all that other stuff you were told to keep by senior administration. Although this is not meant to be an all-encompassing list of permanent records within a college or a university, the following should be considered as a starting point for determining which records your institution should be considering when preserving electronic records. So let's start at the top, as in the leader of your institution, the President's Office. Files from the President's Office that have significant subject or are related to policy making decisions or a program development process should be retained. Just touching on student records a little bit, a well-known permanent student record are transcripts. Other records include directory information policy statements for the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, or FERPA, and another permanent record often being stored electronically are the list of scholarships awarded students among others. There are several records that have permanent retention requirements involving academic affairs. Accreditation records such as reports, questionnaires, self-study guides, and related documents sent between accrediting bodies that have significant importance. Proposals for successfully registered academic programs and curriculum registration records filed with the State Education Department, as well as course information records, including the official copy of the student handbook, college catalogs, and similar documents that are being retained electronically. Published research records from faculty and students are another area to consider. Nowadays, the Alumni Direct offers another example of a record that is primarily kept in electronic format now. Some other administrative records to consider include chartering documents, special occasion or event files, commencement records, including the official program or publication, annual security report, and press releases, which offers another example of records being kept more often in electronic format than in paper. It is important to remember that retention schedules are not based solely on a specific time period from the receipt or creation of a document. Retention is also dependent on an event or occurrence that may trigger the retention period. For example, a student's record retention could be six years after graduation or date of last attendance. But what about the perpetual student, the one that takes at least one course within every six years? which is a common occurrence in community colleges. This could significantly extend the need to retain those students' records. 
financial aid data that's contained in the student information system could be up to six years after the loan is repaid. Any student activity or student organization records that have significant historical value should also be considered, as well as contracts, which could have its retention period based on when the contract expired. Email is a big part of many individuals' work lives and needs to be addressed in many preservation efforts, particularly emails created by senior administrators, such as the president, deans, and department heads, among others. But what should be preserved depends heavily on the content of the email and not just because it is email. As we all know, multimedia content being produced is growing at a rapid pace. It is much easier to produce video footage of an event than ever before with relatively inexpensive devices. There are more and more webcam events of significant and even not so significant lectures and presentations. Significant sporting events and other events are commonly recorded today. Websites, both public-facing as well as those inward-facing on your institution's intranet, may have content worthy of preservation. There are several tools available that we'll discuss later in this workshop to assist you in capturing website-based information, and additional information is also included in the supplemental handouts. Published articles, technical reports, and journals, as well as thesis and dissertations, among other documents, could be considered for preservation, since often they exist in word processing formats or as PDF files. Electronic lab notebooks can be defined in many ways and flavors. They can be simply scan pages stored in a directory or in some form stored in a content management system. They can also be an application-driven database designed to house specific information for the research area that includes numerous forms of data from text, video, and sophisticated modeling capabilities, among others. Many times, presentations and papers offered at significant conferences should be considered for preservation. Presentations may include more than a straightforward PowerPoint presentation and include video, animation, or flash movies, so you need to be aware of these. With more content being stored and maintained within student learning management systems, such as Blackboard and others, these systems can include items the institution may want to retain, even beyond the expected lifespan of the learning management system application. Making sure your learning management system is SCORM compliant helps in the portability of the content, but not in the preservation of it. SCORM stands for Shareable Content Object Reference Model and was intended to assist in the transfer of content between learning management systems, not necessarily to help with the preservation of that information. One area that often gets overlooked is storing and preserving source code from internally developed application programs. These could include legacy financial systems or other applications developed by your IT staff or by an individual or firm your institution hired to develop. Too often the source code is left only in the hands of the developer. But what happens if this person leaves? Many times in research environments in particular, complex and proprietary software used for modeling and other applications are used. The long-term viability of being able to view these data sets created by these specialty applications should be considered. We are seeing more institutions use social media tools. Deciding what should be preserved and how often it should be preserved must be addressed. More and more colleges and universities are creating a presence on sites such as Facebook and others in order to reach the students and prospective students out there. You should always be asking yourself and making notes as you visit departments or hear about activities from colleagues about the records used by the various departments. Ask yourself, what hard copy records did you used to see or handle in your area that you are no longer seeing because they exist solely in the digital world now. How are these records being preserved? 
This concludes Section 2. In the next section, we'll cover some of the issues you should be aware of when discussing preservation of electronic records.